Hello everybody! Welcome to History Tree House. I am your host, Miss Susie. Welcome to the second video in my three-part series on Yuletide in the Country at Genesee Country Village and Museum. If you didn't see part one, which was the history of the Christmas tree, I will put a link above and in the description below. I have got my mug of hot chocolate and I'm all ready to watch part two with you. Can you guess where this mug is from? Oh yes, Genesee Country Village and Museum. And these mugs are made right in the potter shop in the historic village itself. You can go and watch these being made. They sign each one on the bottom and you can even buy these online. <gasps> You can get one and join me in a mug of hot chocolate. So I will put the link below to their website so you can get one yourself. And they have a lot of other cool things there. So grab your favorite beverage because this video is all about carols and dancing in the 19th century. I hope you enjoy. Mm. The weather on this day was causing some tricky travel issues in this part of western New York State, but the snow coming down inside the village created a winter wonderland. After visiting the McKay House to learn about the history of Christmas trees, then a stop at the MacArthur House to have a visit with St. Nick, my videographer, Corey, and I headed to the church where we found a homeschool group not only learning about the history of carols in the 19th century, but singing some of them and wow, did they ever sound marvelous. Brooks Grove Methodist Church with Judy, who is an historical interpreter here at Genesee Country Village and Museum. And Judy, you are teaching the school groups that are coming in today all about caroling at this time of year. What can you tell us about Christmas carols or some of the interesting facts about that? When the kids come in for our field trips, I sing three different songs with them. We sing Jingle Bells, and I teach the kids that actually was not a Christmas song. It was written for Thanksgiving, and we just tend to skip over it now. It was so popular that they wanted to sing it again at Christmas, and now it's just traditionally become a Christmas carol. And then we have the kids sing Up on a Housetop, and that was the first song that ever talked about Santa Claus. So it was written in 1866. And the last song we sing is Deck the Halls. And I get the kids kind of moving around because it's a lot more fun. The one year I was doing the field trips with kids and they were just sitting there. They didn't want to sing. And it, I was kind of discouraged. Like, how do I get these guys to sing? So then we did the standing up and sitting down when it was their turn to sing. So the song Deck the Halls was meant to be sung by two groups of people. And you have the caller who sings the first line, the follower who would sing the next line. So it's, a, it's a fun song to sing, so it gets them moving around and gets them giggling and participating. Do you know if they had special services or where would they normally sing these songs? I mean, definitely singing in a church. You know, you hear about the Christmas Eve service, and even if you have studied Laura Ingalls Wilder, mm -hmm. her and Manly used to go to singings at the church. Oh, so yeah. I can imagine they would have had a Christmas singing as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I forget about those historical references that we have. That is true. I would love to talk about the candelabra that is hanging there. The candelabra is fantastic. Looks like it has been lit. We do light this for our Yuletide tours. So every year at the village we have these Christmas Yuletide tours, a little theatrical scene, and it is magnificent to see this lit at night, and it is quite bright and beautiful. Um, as you can see, we do have to put a tarp underneath of it because if you were sitting beneath it, you would probably be getting a hot wax dripping <laughs> on your head, and that would probably not be what you'd want to have done. So wow. the little drip trays are a little small. Um, they do look newer to me, so I'm assuming the originals might have been a little bigger or more angled to catch some of the drips. But then different types of candles will drip more than others as well. When we think of lighting in a church setting, especially 
this time of year when we know that it gets dark much sooner. Farmers would have been coming in from the fields so they would have had a, a service later when it would have been dark. You're saying that that really does light this place up. It does a wonderful job lighting up this room. Wow, that's amazing. Because you would think that you would need a lot more to light up a space I mean, We like have the, the kerosene lights in the windows as well. So oh, it's, yes. it is beautiful here yeah. at night with these the lights. Oh, and when our visitors come, they are often like ooing and eyeing the beautiful <laughs> candelabra. Oh, I have come um, on some of the Yuletide tours, um, but I don't remember seeing that lit. So hopefully I can get here and hopefully some of you can get here someday and see that candelabra lit. I'm sure it's beautiful. It is. So it was wonderful to hear the, the school kids. You get it, they got them singing and got them up and uh, uh, got them a little bit of exercise while they were singing too. <laughs> and also teaching them a little bit about Christmas presents from days gone by to what they get now. Oh, okay. Oh, is that something you can tell us about? That? Well, I mean, this on up on the housetop, you've got little Will who is getting a hammer and tacks. And what child today would be happy getting a hammer and tacks for Christmas or a whistle and a, a, a whip that cracks? I mean, I have three boys. I would never give them a whip that cracks. Um, Although my videographer is raising his hand <laughs> yeah, behind the camera. So. But you think about I mean, a little boy would want nothing more than to feel manly and be out there helping his dad. Yeah. So to have his own tools would be yeah. a really special little treat for him. So he could be out there hammering away. And the, the little girl gets the doll. And those aren't the original words to the song. Um, they did change a little bit. I'm not sure what the original were. And I never thought about uh, looking at the words of a song to kind of get clues about perhaps how they lived mm -hmm. back then. So that's interesting. Well, even the song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. We think about, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, and he's talking about old familiar carols play, wild and sweet, the words repeat, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. The man who wrote that song was severely depressed. Oh, Because yes. his wife had died and his son had died. Yeah. I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, and he was actually sad singing that song. Yeah. And that's what, you know, he wrote it out of his sadness. But yeah. if you look at all those words... He's sad. And we treat it as a happy Christmas song. It does have a, a somewhat encouraging ending. It does. Encouraging people. There's um, hope. Yeah, there's hope. There's yeah. hope. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. And on that note, we will hope that we can get some more in of the village. And I thank you, Judy, You're again welcome. for the information and, and for little insights. We always learn something new every time I come here. You're I just love it. So thank Good. you so much. You're welcome. My last stop of the day was the town hall, where the same school group was getting a lesson in 19th century dancing. They were fast learners and so light on their feet that they certainly made me feel as if we were all back in time when dancing was a much loved and looked forward to activity. doing a great job. I am here in the town hall at Genesee Country Village and Museum and I am here with Allison and we came in just as they were doing a fantastic dance. Um, a reel? A, a Virginia reel. A Virginia reel. And was that a common thing in Western New York? Did that carry on up through New England? Or? It was. It was a very popular form of entertainment, not just at Yuletide, but all year round as well, without having video games and <laughs> movies to watch and iPods to turn on for music. You found fun things to do with your family and friends right in your own home mm. and dancing was one of the most popular. Are there references to how they would celebrate around Yuletide and certain dances that they would do? Yes, actually the most famous one comes from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. At Fezziwig's Ball they dance the Sir Roger de Coverley, which is the old name for the Virginia Reel. Oh, I see. So the Virginia Reel really is a It's a medieval popular. dance, actually, oh, and really? very, very popular. Oh, yes. my. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, wow. Wonderful to see that, and uh, it makes sense that that would have been a popular form of entertainment because of not having what we have now. And 
Um, it would have been some good exercise too. Good as... exercise. You stay warm, and it's very social. Oh, yes. Most of their life was very hard work and independent, getting stuff done. So it was a chance to relax and see your friends and neighbors. Yeah. And I think we can hear a little bit of mischief going yes. on out there, can't we? Yes. <laughs> they're, they're, um, they're creating mischief and, uh, in, uh, and having fun in other ways yes. besides dancing. Whoa, back up the school bus. Why are these kids being allowed to scream and make so much noise? Where are their teachers? Well, actually, the students are learning about an old tradition known as misrule, Rowdy celebrations of Christmastide held over the 12 days from December 24th to January 5th. The Puritans, of course, deeply objected to this practice, and a devout 16th century man named Philip Stubbs wrote the following, in which you will note the fantastical original Old English. First, all the wild heads of the parish choose them a grand captain of all mischief, whom they ennoble with the title of my lord of misrule. This king anointed chooseth forth a number of lusty guts like to himself. Then march these heathen company towards the church in the churchyard, their pipers piping, their drummers thundering, their stumps dancing, their bells yingling, their handkerchiefs swinging about their heads like madmen. Their hobby horses and other monsters skirmishing amongst the rout. So, this is the reason the kids are marching through the village making so much noise. And if you are watching this video before January 5th, it looks like you still have time to go out and have some misrule of your own. But for now, let's get back to my interview with Allison. The, the Virginia Reel, one of the more um, it was a more popular one, but were there other ones besides yes. that? Yes, there's um, a whole range written into dance book. Square dances, which they would have called quadrilles, um, the more line dances like the Virginia Reel, uh, and everything in between. So wow. there are a lot of dances that you can learn and they would have known. Wow, that's amazing. Oh my goodness. And, and this would have brought a community together too. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Allison. I appreciate you uh, letting us take a peek in and uh, watch them dance. That was fantastic. You're and the fiddle playing was wonderful. Yes. So, um, and you have a Merry Christmas, a Merry Yuletide. You as well. And uh, I thank you for letting us uh, come in. You're welcome. Happy thank Christmas. You. Yeah, you too. <laughs> And with that, our time was done at the village as the snow came down even harder. But rest assured, when the spring thaw comes and the village is bustling with activity for the summer, I will be back to discover more history. Wasn't that fun? I hope you're enjoying this video series. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you soon. On Yuletide in the Country at Genesee Country Museum and Village. Oh, screwed that up. The second video in my three. Oops. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but that was kind of funny. <laughs> Almost hit it on the first take. Oh, this is what I do.